What's up, everybody? We've got a brand new, awesome video for you, and it is sponsored by Monero Cat. Uh, she's really into privacy and uh, told me that I needed to do a Monero myth busting video. Actually, I'm lying. That was totally Chill's idea. But um, yeah, we wanted to do some like Monero tech for dummies. And uh, if you're new to it or if you're like Bitcoin and you're hearing all these terms like ring signatures and ring CT and stealth addresses, blah, blah, blah. Um, just real quick, you should know that ring signatures are what hide the sender. Ring CT is what hides the amount of your transaction and the stealth addresses are what hide the receiver. And even if one of those are compromised, um, it doesn't compromise the other ones. So, you know, the, the, the security uh, of Monero is not reliant on like each one of its parts. Each one of its parts kind of functions independently, which is like a really cool and, and novel uh, thing that Monero does well. Um, but yeah, with that, we've got some facts for you. Chill, what's our first fact? So number one, we often hear it that um, Monero supply cannot be verified um, because everything is hidden. And this is actually wrong. First, Monero does have um, a zero knowledge range proving system, meaning the network can verify that there were no new coins created or destroyed in a transaction process. Number two, there's this thing called uh, Coinbase transactions which is a minor rewards, and that does not use ring CT, which means it's not hidden. Therefore, the supply is easily verifiable. All right, so Monero myth number two um, is that Bitcoin has a 21 million fixed supply and Monero is inflationary. Um, so actually the total supply of circulating Monero um, is going to still be less than Bitcoin's uh, until around 2040. Um, and right now, Monero's inflation is currently quite a bit lower than Bitcoin's. Um, the Monero block reward decreases similar to Bitcoin's, um, and it does that constantly until it reaches about 0 0.6 uh, XMR, um, at which point it just stays there indefinitely. Um, and this is known as a, a, as a tail emission. Um, and, you know, Bitcoin's inflation is always declining um, with each block reward having, you know, the last one, uh, May 2020, um, and then one in 2024, 2028, um, actually makes the inflation decline slower. Um, and because uh, before the tail emission, Monero's inflation declines much faster than Bitcoin. Um, and after the Monero tail emission happens, um, it still declines forever. Um, so the tail emission will make sure that the network is kept secure as the miners are still incentivized to keep it, uh, keep it that way because there, there's still an indefinite block reward. Um, with, uh, with Bitcoin, there's still a little bit of uncertainty around like the fee market that's going to develop when the, the block rewards become, you know, basically negligible. Um, so there, there's a little bit of concern there for Bitcoin. Monero does not have that because of the tail emission. Um, tail emission also fits a good economic model as wallets get lost or taken away. Um, and, and a little bit of inflation is good for the economics of a currency. That's, uh, that, that's just kind of a, a, a known accepted fact. So, yep, that's number two. Monero myth number three is that there are no good Monero wallets. Um, and this is uh, not correct. We have uh, Monerujo, we have Cake Wallet, and we have My Monero, and the all amazing Monero wallet. <laughs> Plus, we have some desktop wallets as well. Monero myth number four is that Monero is not scalable. Um, so the the criticism here uh, that I, I've heard is, you know, if Monero ever sees mass adoption. Uh, you know, it's not going to be scalable. The blockchain is going to slow down and, uh, you know, the fees will skyrocket and, and all of that stuff. Um, and, you know, the, the argument, it kind of makes sense because the transactions are larger for Monero, like compared to Bitcoin, because of all the privacy uh, preserving features, there's a little bit more data that's included in each transaction. It's not just, uh, um, you know, it's not just the bare minimum. There, there's things that, that preserve your privacy. So the transactions are larger. However, we have dynamic block size, which means the amount of uh, or the size of the block can get bigger as there's more transactions 
um, that are being requested or are trying to be broadcast and sent through. Um, so the, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of like a, we don't know. Um, that there's an option to increase scaling. We've got a lot of super smart people that are working on the Monero, um, you know, core code. Um, so, you know, I feel like we're going to, we're going to be able to scale when that day comes and we're, we're maxing out on our transactions per second. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that's the, that's myth number four. Myth number five, Monero is not available on major exchanges such as Coinbase and Gemini. This is actually true. Most uh, KYC regulated exchanges do not support Monero. Um, the government hates privacy unless it's about their own privacy. Uh, <laughs> uh, however, Monero is available on Kraken, so you can buy it there. Monero myth number six is that Monero will be banned or face regulatory scrutiny due to its commitment to anonymity. Um, so this one actually has a little bit of precedent uh, in it, but I mean, you know, as a part of the Monero community, I, I feel comfortable saying that, you know, we all believe that financial privacy is a human right. I mean, I know I do, um, and something that is essential for freedom um, and that everybody should be able to transact privately without, you know, governments or corporations or, or literally anyone else, you know, spying on you. Um, that's just, you know, that, that, that's just how things ought to work. Um, and uh, I think adding on to that a little bit, um, the, the anonymity, it's there, there are quite a few different frameworks that already exist in the traditional system for dealing with like anonymous cash transactions. Um, and turn, you know, talking about, you know, where'd you get this money, anti-money laundering policies and all of that stuff. Um, so the, the precedent and like the framework is kind of already there to like deal with anonymous uh, currency transactions. And, you know, we just have to apply it to a digital cryptocurrency. It's not that hard to do it. And actually, Justin Ehrenhofer has a great uh, kind of opinion on that, um, where he kind of breaks down how it actually works if you want to take, you know, Monero um, and, you know, just using an existing regulatory framework. So that one doesn't really make sense. Just treat it like cash and, you know, make a few adjustments so that it works digitally. Everybody's happy. Monero's user experience is not the best. Okay, admittedly, uh, Monero is more difficult to use than uh, Bitcoin because it has longer addresses, longer syncing time because uh, we have they have to scan the blockchain and make sure that the address belongs to the account. However, as Justin would say, any idiot can use Monero privately, uh, <laughs> but with Bitcoin, there's a long, um, complicated list of steps you need to take in order to make sure you're private, um, which means that majority of the users are not able to use Bitcoin privately or never will be able to because they're not at that technical level. Monero myth number eight. Look at all those fingers. Uh, Bit Monero will become obsolete if Bitcoin adds privacy. And I hear this one a lot. Um, and honestly, the reality is, I don't, e neither of us really ever see Bitcoin putting privacy on the first layer. Um, it's probably going to be the, the way that everybody talks about it, it's going to be a layer two solution uh, for Bitcoin, the privacy. And it's really difficult to add privacy in. Um, and this is because you can't unleak the data and the metadata that's already being leaked in layer one, right? If it's on top of that, um, there's still, and really, you know, the way I think about privacy when it comes to like, you know, my cryptocurrency transactions is I just don't want data getting leaked out there. Um, and if you've got a layer one that's still leaking data, um, and sure the layer two is, uh, you know, is, is preserving your privacy, there's gonna, it's not gonna be the, the best solution and it's gonna be much, much more vulnerable and likely to be compromised in some way. Um, you know, right now, the best thing you can do is use the Bitcoin wallet Samurai um, or something similar like that. 
but this is still opt-in privacy and that is always going to be inferior to privacy that is on by default, uh, which is what Monero does. When, when you're opting into privacy, the people who don't opt in reduce everyone else's privacy because you can use them and use their data uh, to try and um, decrease the privacy of everybody else. So it's a kind of a, it's, it's almost an all or nothing kind of thing. Um, and if you put in layer two privacy on Bitcoin, it's, it's never going to be as private as Monero will because Monero is private by default. Myth number nine, Monero has very high transaction fees. Um, not anymore. <laughs> um, Bullet Bruce actually brought this down drastically. Uh, right now, it's around 0.003 cents per transaction. Um, and it's likely to become even lower as innovations are being and implementations are uh, being um, made on the Monero network. Monero myth number 10 is actually a two for one. Um, the first bit is Monero has hard forks quite often, uh, therefore it is centralized. And then the part two of that is Monero is easily 51% attacked. Um, so the first part of that, you know, Monero has these hard forks quite often. Um, this is true. That is not a, that is not a lie. Um, but the reason for these hard forks uh, were to keep the, the ASIC uh, mining machines off of the network. Um, if you don't know what an ASIC is, it's just a specialized machine that only mines like a specific uh, proof of work algorithm. Um, and so the Monero community decided in 2018 after uh, Bitmain announced that they had made an ASIC uh, for the current uh, Monero mining algorithm, the, the Monero community was like, oh my God, no, we don't want ASICs. Um, if, the, you know, if we have allow ASICs to mine Monero, the, there's actually a, a much, much higher risk of centralizing all of the mining power um, with these, you know, these expensive machines that somebody with a lot of money can just buy a bunch of and then just gain a huge portion of the network hash rate. Um, and that actually increases the possibility of a 51% attack um, when you have ASICs in the ecosystem. So Monero was like, nope, we don't want that. Um, we're going to hard fork the mine. We're going to hard fork Monero every six months and change to a new proof of work algorithm um, so that, you know, if somebody wants to create an ASIC, uh, by the time they build it and ship it six months later, there's a new algo and that ASIC is obsolete. So it just doesn't make sense to do that. Um, and this kind of cycle of um, hard forking every six months continued up until about 2019, um, at which point Monero successfully switched to the random X uh, mining algorithm, which is both ASIC and GPU resistant. Um, the goal of that is so that one CPU, which is, you know, like your Intel or your AMD processor, uh, your, your, uh, your central processing unit, one CPU equals one vote. Um, and since then, there have not been any more hard forks. The way that random X works, uh, you can't, or it's very, very difficult to make an ASIC for it. Um, and so now we no longer have any hard forks and we don't have any ASICs. So the risk of a 51% attack and centralization is much, much, much lower. So yeah, uh, myth number 10, you're busted. Myth number 11, Monero is Fluffy Pony's coin. No. No. <laughs> Monero myth number 12, and I don't have 12 fingers, so I'm not going to hold my hands up here, but uh, Monero myth number 12 is that Monero is super centralized, and this is just not true. Uh, if you know anything about the history of Monero, um, it had a fair launch. There was no ICO, no pre-mine, no founder's reward. Uh, if you knew about the launch and you were wanted to participate in it, you could do so, um, and there was no like early allocation to, to people who were you know, involved in the project or, you know, had, uh, were buddies with somebody that was, was working on it. Um, and uh, kind of, in my opinion, because of this, a lot of developers are attracted to the Monero project because it is literally one of the most decentralized projects out there. Um, and currently 
even though the market cap is uh, does not reflect this. Monero has the third largest developer community, um, and the only the cryptocurrencies that have more developers working on their ecosystem are Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, which are number one and two. Um, and you know, with the random X mining, like I talked about in uh, myth number ten, there uh, the the mining is incredibly democratic. All you you can literally mine on your phone. Uh, or, you know, with a laptop or, you know, with a specialized kind of serve CPU uh, server rig. Um, all of that is fair game. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you if you value decentralization in terms of mining, developers and community, Monero is, is number one. It is, uh, it, it's, it's very, very, very decentralized. And that was like a big uh, priority for the early community. And it still is a big priority for the community. So Myth number 13, Monero is a scam. <laughs> Actually, the early um, creator of Monero was indeed a scammer, and he wanted to um, uh, use Monero for his own little uh, nefarious purposes. But uh, the early um, community, including Fluffy Pon Pony, saw the promise and the potential in the technology and took over the Monero project. And um, it has not been um, in the scammer's hand ever since. <laughs> so to sum up, um, we had 13 uh, Monero myths that we just busted for you. Um, but I want to end it on kind of a high note here. Um, so, you know, like what what can you expect from the Monero project in the future? Um, and <laughs> the, the at the end of the day, honestly, Monero is kind of boring. Um, I mean, they're kind of they're hyper focused on the mission of uh, enabling private digital cash. That's that's what Monero wants to do. Um, this is just like a basic financial infrastructure component. Financial privacy is huge. Um, you need it if you're going to have a, a free and open market and economy. Um, but, you know, it's not that exciting. It's like plumbing or roads or bridges. It's it's infrastructure, right? It's Monero is just private money. That's all they want to do. They're not trying to, you know, build a tower to the moon and, you know, revolutionize, you know, end world hunger or, you know, find peace in the Middle East or whatever, you know, crazy claims all these other uh, shit coins are out there promoting, um, you know, and most of those claims are, are, you know, are bogus anyway and are just designed to get you to put money into their crappy project. But we're not talking about shit coins. We're talking about Monero. Um, and yeah, it's hyper focused. It's private digital cash totally a goal worth pursuing but it can be kind of boring um, but yeah we love it and we hope you will love it too after watching this video